thank you students once again uh, this is another opportunity for me to record on the topic of intangible assets uh, just a practice question it says matrix ltd business is involved in the bottling and distribution of a wide variety of carbonated soft drinks some of their drinks are developed internally by the business whilst other brands are purchased from outside their financial year is ending 31st of december each and every year and the following information is relevant with regards to an intangible asset the coca-cola brand the brand was purchased on the 1st of June 2011 for an amount of 1,040,000. So this is the cost of this intangible asset, meaning the purchase cost or the purchase price of this intangible asset, uh, which was paid for in full. So this was paid in cash. In other words, we'll have to debit the asset being an intangible asset of 1,040,000 and we credit our bank account by 1,040,000 because this was paid in for on that date. So if the this purchase uh, transaction was not recorded, this is what we'll need to do. In addition to that, an amount of 60,000 was paid for legal fees to secure the right uh, to use the coca-cola brand and the brand was ready for use on this date so now that means again we have paid for this legal fees which is a cost to be capitalized uh, in this intangible asset so now again we will debit uh, the asset which is the coca-cola brand as an asset we debit that and we credit our bank because money was paid and when money is paid we therefore now our bank account as an asset will decrease on the credit side so now that means the cost of this intangible asset will be the sum of the two when i'm saying the sum of the two that means one million and forty thousand rands plus the legal fees to secure the use of this asset will give us the cost of this brand being one million one hundred thousand rands which is the cost of this asset uh, including the cost to be capitalized which in this case is only the legal fees then after it further say that the coca-cola brand is expected to have a residual value of zero intangible assets uh, have residual value at the end of their useful life then after we are told that uh, on the end of december uh, take note that the residual value is zero first and the useful life is 10 years so now we expect to use this brand for a period of 10 years after 10 years we will no longer be allowed to produce these drinks because we no longer have the right to use uh, this brand anymore so now hence after 10 years the value for this brand then becomes zero because you can't produce any product of this color brand after the expiry of the useful life uh, of the contract so now it says on the 31st of december 2011 the coca-cola brand was estimated to have a recoverable amount of 900,000 rands now the minute you are given the ra which is the recoverable amount you always have to say vice versa the carrying amount always determine the carrying amount at the date you are provided with the recoverable amount now so that you are able to say recoverable amount vice versa the carrying amount the difference will either be an impairment loss or a, a reversal of the impairment loss if uh, there is no impairment loss at the current period but there was impairment loss of the previous period so now this 900,000 rands, we must say, uh, compare this with the carrying amount at the date the recoverable amount is provided. Sometimes they can give you the recoverable amount as on the 1st of January 2012. That must not bother you because 
the very the recovered blood mount at the end of December is the recovered blood <clears throat> recovered blood mount at the beginning of January. So if the date is the beginning of the next accounting period, let that not bother you. You apply the same concept of carrying amount vice versa that uh, the recovered blood mount to test for the impairment. So now we are provided with that. Then further than that, it says on the thirty first of December twenty twelve. The directors uh, estimated that the Cola brand would have a shorter useful life than expected. So now remember previously the useful life was supposed to be 10 years but the directors are now then expecting a shorter useful life than it should be. So now it says they estimated that the brand only would have a useful life of 8 years. This is by the end of December 2012. and. We always say that if the estimate took place at the end of the year, we assume that it was the case beginning of the year. So we bring that to the beginning of the year, but not to the end of the year. Then we start doing our calculations. So we are saying now this change in estimate took place on the 1st of January 2012, not at the end of December even though the decision was taken at the end of the year but we assume that this must have been the case at the beginning of the year but the directors of the company only sat at the meeting at the end of the year and they did that discovery so now we have to calculate uh, the carrying amount at the beginning of the year then after we take into account the change in the useful life so now the company says the useful life is then expected to be eight years from the 1st of January 2012 is supposed to be eight years, no longer 10 years. Remember, this asset was uh, available for use on the 1st of July. If you remember that, it was available for use at the 1st of July. They say the asset was ready for use at this date. And immediately when it was ready for use at that date, therefore now we say from July up until uh, December, we have July up until December. From July till December, this will be six months, which is half a year. So now, uh, this is at 31st of uh, December 2011, which is the same as 1st of January 2012. So now this is a period of six months. That means out of the 10 years, take note, out of the 10 years, uh, half a year, which is 0 0.5, is gone. Remember 0 0.5 being 6 months out of 12 months will be 0 0.5, meaning half a year. So now that means we're supposed to have been left with 9.5 years, meaning 9 years and 6 months by the 1st of January 2012. But now we are told that on the 1st of January 2012, which uh, the, 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 the decision was um, only taken end of December. Now we say on the 1st of January, 2012 it was supposed to be nine and a half years but the company says now uh, they are counting the useful life of this asset supposed to be eight years and we know that eight years that uh, the five month or six months is already gone so now if the useful life is eight years we need to say this asset has already been in the business for six months we need to minus that six months there uh, which we know that is half a year in other words Therefore, now we say out of this eight years, six months is already gone, meaning half a year is already gone. We say minus 0 0.5, it will give us seven and a half years, meaning the remaining useful life is seven and a half years because uh, six months is already gone from the 1st of July up until the end of December. But I'll still come back and explain that when we reach to the note. Then now it says that uh, they estimated that the brand will only have a total, take note, they don't say the remaining, they say the total useful life. And again, previously, the total useful life was 10 years. But by the end of December 2012, by the end of December 2012, the remaining useful life in this 10 years is nine and a half years. Why am I saying it's nine and a half years by end of December? Because the asset would have been in the business from July, August, September, October, November, December, which is six months. So now if six months is gone, we no longer have 10 years remaining, but we only have 
and nine and a half years remaining because six months is gone hence i'm also saying here out of this uh, eight years total useful life for fish the eight is the same as the ten now because there's a change in estimate so now we say out of this eight years which is a new total estimate we say five months is already gone meaning half a year we minus 0 0.5 and say the remaining now in the new estimate will be 7.5 years but in the previous one it, it would have been 9.5 years because six months is gone so in other words we say in the total uh, remaining useful life so in the total useful life of eight years we minus the number of years that are already gone meaning uh, the one that have already been used by the asset which is six months in this case then after we are left with seven and a half years that are remaining now it further says that uh, the residual value will be zero as always and on this date the recoverable amount of the brand was estimated to be how much to be eight hundred ten fifty thousand. again whenever we are provided with the recoverable amount we also need carrying value or carrying amount at this date where we say recoverable amount vice versa carrying value to test for the impairment if is there any impairment uh, of this asset at the date uh, we are provided with the recoverable amount now we come to what we are required to do we are required to to prepare the note to the financial statements of matrix ltd for the financial year that end 31st of december 2012 for and for intangible assets specifically the coca-cola brand only we must not focus on all other intangible assets that they have but only this one <clears throat> now i've already provided the note for you and the note uh, says note to the financial statements uh, for the year ended 31st of december 2012 then we start with the net carrying amount this is very important always the net carrying amount is the recoverable amount at that date that means we need to look for the net carrying am for, sorry for the recoverable amount at the 31st of december 2012 sorry 2011 in this case where we are starting in this case we had at 31st of december 2011 the coca-cola brand was estimated to have a recoverable amount this recoverable amount is at 31st of december 2011 you always take this recoverable amount uh, you put it under the net carrying amount at that date so now this will be 900 000 rands i'll tell you why i'm doing this i'll explain everything always your net carrying amount is always your recoverable amount your net carrying amount is always your recoverable amount at that date which in this case 31st of december 2012 then after what do we do now we take uh, into our account the gross carrying amount the gross carrying amount which is the cost of this brand which is the cost of this brand we know that the cost of this brand it is one million one hundred thousand rands it is one million one hundred thousand rands where is the one million one hundred thousand rands it is the cost of the brand that we purchase for and the legal fees that we calculated the cost to be capitalized the cost of the brand was a purchase price of one million and forty plus the legal fees uh, to secure the right to use this brand and the sum of these two gave us one million 100,000 rands. So now this is the cost of this brand, uh, which I write here as the cost. Now remember, this is the carrying amount or net carrying amount at the 31st of December uh, 2011. Then what do we need now? We need what is called depreciation of the intangible assets. We need accumulated depreciation of the intangible asset. Therefore, now this will be called accumulated accumulated amortization accumulated amortization amortization now accumulated amortization it is the accumulated depreciation of the intangible asset remember this asset was available for use on the 1st of july and now we are at the 31st of december 2011 
So now that means it will be July, August, September, October, November, December. So now we are to calculate uh, the amortization only for a period of six months, meaning the depreciation or accumulated depreciation for six months from July 2011 till December 2011. So now we say 1,100,000 million rands. Divide this by the old useful life. Therefore, now we get to our amortization for the full year, meaning depreciation for the full year. Then we say we are looking for the depreciation for full month. We divide by two. We get to an amount of 55,000 rands. Let me say times by two. This is the amortization for the full year. We can say times by six over 12 months. That is a half, 55,000. So now this is amortization from the 1st of July up until 31st of December in the year 2011, only for the period of six months. So now this will be our amortization. And it's very important to you, this uh, is a strategy. You can see that whatever we add here and we subtract in this box, we need to make sure that it will lead us to the uh, recoverable amount, which is the net carrying amount in other words. But if we say 1,100,000 rands minus 55,000, which is our amortization, we get to what is a, an amount of 1,045,000. And 1,045,000 is, is more than the net carrying amount. That means we still need to deduct something in order for us to get to that one million or oh sorry that nine hundred thousand rands so now let us say one million and forty five thousand minus nine hundred thousand rands nine hundred thousand rands this gives us an amount of hundred and forty five thousand rands so now hundred and forty five thousand rands will definitely be what we call amort uh, uh, with what we call impairment loss so i can be very confident that there is an impairment loss that has taken place although I have not yet tested the impairment loss. The difference will be an impairment loss. So that when I say 1,100,000 rands minus 55,000 rands minus 145,000 rands, it must give me the 900,000 rands, which is the net carrying amount. So now that is very clear. Let us now do the impairment loss or test if this 145,000, it is really an impairment loss. Remember, at the end of December 2012, we were provided with the recoverable amount of 900,000 rands. So now we need the carrying amount at this date. And our carrying amount will be cost of 1,500,000 rands minus amortization. That means minus depreciation up until the date, meaning up until 31st of December. And amortization, meaning depreciation of the intangible asset up until December for six months, is only 55,000. So now that means if we say 1,100,000 rands minus 55,000 rands, we get to the carrying amount of 1,045,000 rands. And we can see that our carrying amount is more than the recoverable amount and if the carrying amount is more than the recoverable amount the difference becomes an impairment loss so now we say 1,045,000 minus 900,000 rands we see that 145,000 rands that we have already calculated it is an impairment loss so now we have done that very well now we are at the end of December remember end of December 2011 and now we are told uh, that uh, there was a change in estimate. And when did the estimate took place? It took place on the 1st of January 2012. And I'm repeating this one. The change in estimate took place on the 1st of January 2012. Why I'm saying 1st of January 2012? It is because the estimate is always assumed that it take place at the beginning of the year, not at the end of the year. That means we assume that this estimate must have been uh, uh, like that beginning of the year, but because directors, they only sit in a meeting at the end of the year uh, in order to discover that. Otherwise, the state of this business or this asset must have been 
uh, changed beginning of the year. That is why now, although the directors took uh, the decision at the end of the year, we assume that it was like that beginning of the year. So now, always make sure you take this into consideration. So now we say our change in estimate is taking place 1st of January uh, in the year 2012. In the year 2012. Then we say now, how much is the total useful life uh, for this change in estimate? They said that uh, the total useful life for this asset is 8 years. What do we need to know? We need to know the remaining useful life. That's what we need to know. We need to know the remaining useful life. In this case, if we say now the useful life total is 8 years, we say this asset was available for use on the 1st of July uh, 2011 and it will be July, August, September, October, November, December. This is equal to 6 months. And 6 months out of 12 months will give us 0 0.5 uh, meaning half a year. That means out of this eight years of useful life in total, uh, half a year is already gone from July up until December 2011. Six months is already gone. Therefore, now we have to minus the six month, which is 0 0.5, so that the remaining useful life, this is what we're looking for. We are looking for the remaining useful life when it comes to the change in estimate. Remember again, for this 10 years, we know that half a year is gone again by the end of uh, December 2011, meaning beginning of January 2012. If uh, half a year is gone, that means this was supposed to be 10 minus 0 0.5. The remaining useful life was supposed to be nine and a half years. This is what the remaining life was supposed to be. But we, are, we can see that the remaining now in the change in estimate is seven and a half. And this is really a change in estimate. And we can see that this useful life for this asset is really shorter than it was supposed to be. So now that means we are dealing with the remaining useful life of how many years? Seven and a half years. So now what do we need to do? We need to calculate our amortization now. We need to calculate what is called amortization, meaning the depreciation now considering uh, the change in estimate. We calculate amortization and we say now we take the carrying amount of this asset when at the end of the accounting period, meaning at the date of the change in estimate. Our change in estimate took place 1st of January 2012, which is same as the end of December 2011. So now we don't take the cost of 1,100,000 rands anymore but we take the carrying amount at that date. Therefore, now this is 900,000 rands. The net carrying amount divide this by 7.5 years. Then we say 900,000 rands divide by 7.5 years. Then this will give us the full amortization, meaning the full depreciation of 120,000 rands for uh, uh, the full year period. Now, this will be the current year. Now, this is for at 31st of December 2012. Uh, for the current year, this will be our amortization. Immediately when this is done now, we then need to do what is called uh, the testing of the impairment loss. But I don't want to test the impairment loss now because I want to do something that is a little bit similar to what I did before. Let us just leave uh, the line here for either impairment loss or the reversal of the impairment. Then after skipping the line now, we apply the same principle because at the end here, we also need what is called net carrying amount. Net carrying amount at the end of the period. Our net carrying amount uh, is at 31st of December 2012. Remember, I said the net carrying amount must always be your recoverable amount at that period. We are provided um, at the end of December 2012. We are provided at the end of December 2012 with the recoverable amount. Recoverable amount of how much? 850,000. And I said to you once again, a net carrying amount is the recoverable amount. 
or write the recoverable amount under the net carrying amount. Then after what do we have next? We will have the gross carrying amount. Remember the gross carrying amount, sorry, the gross carrying amount is the cost of the asset. The gross carrying amount, which is the cost of the asset, does not change. So the gross carrying amount is still 1,100,000 rands. So now 1,100,000 rands. Then after we have accumulated amortization, meaning accumulated depreciation in the language that is familiar to you. Accumulated amortization. Remember, we had amortization uh, for six months. Then we had another amortization for the full year up until end of 2012. So now that will be total accumulated amortization. 55,000 plus 120,000 rands. This gives us 175,000 rands. This will give us 175,000 rands. We only take the amortization, total of the amortization, meaning amortization for the six month, meaning depreciation for the six month, and amortization for the current year that we have calculated, meaning depreciation of the intangible asset for the current year. That will give us accumulated amortization by the end of December 2012. Therefore, now remember, this amount minus this amount, plus or minus this amount, it must give us the 850,000. So let us test. So now that means we need to uh, say 1,100,000 rands minus 175,000 rands. Uh, it gave us 925,000 rands. This is not uh, 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 850,000. So now let us say minus 850,000 rands. So that we see how much do we need. The amount that we need here is an amount of 75,000 rands. And remember, let me say plus 850,000 rands back. The amount which is the difference between 1.1 million minus 175,000, it is 925,000. So that means we still need to reduce this amount by the difference between 925 and 850,000 in order for us to get to that 850,000. Hence, I said minus 850,000 and whatever figure I get, which is 75,000, must be negative. So now we draw the line and we test that 1,100,000 rands minus uh, 175,000 rands minus 75,000 rands. We can see that it gives us 850,000 rands. So the question is, what is this amount for? This amount, it is still accumulated impairment loss. This is accumulated impairment loss. This is accumulated impairment loss. Now, how do we get to this accumulated impairment loss? Remember, there was an impairment loss previously. Let me highlight this to you. It's very important what I'm doing now. Remember, there was impairment loss previously of how much? Of 145,000 rands. And we can see that our current impairment loss decreased. It's no longer the same as the previous one, which is 145,000 rands. It is now how much? 75,000 rands. That means that there must have been a reversal of the impairment loss. How much is 145,000 minus 75,000 rands? That means 70,000 must have been the reversal of the impairment loss. So now that 70,000 is the missing figure that we should be writing in uh, the middle here. So this is impairment loss reversal of 70,000 rands that we are looking for. Prior, prior impairment loss reversal. Prior impairment loss reversal. And we can see that the previous year impairment loss reversal, it is a total of 70,000 rands. And remember, when it's a reversal, it becomes positive. Now, uh, let us just withhold it there and we check now where is this 70,000 rands coming from. Now, remember, at the end of this year, December 2012, we were given how much? 
we were given 850,000 rands. We were given 850,000 rands. So now we need to say this 850,000 rands, which is the recoverable amount, vice versa, the carrying amount at this date. So now let us go and calculate our carrying amount at this date. How to calculate our carrying amount at this date? We have our 900,000 rands minus 120,000 rands. This gives us 780,000 rands. Remember now, since there was a change in estimate, the change in estimate took place on the 1st of January uh, 2012, which is the same as 31st of December 2012. And when there's a change in estimate, we take the carrying amount on that date, we treat it as the cost price. So now, hence we took the 900,000 rands, divided that by the remaining useful life. That means now, when we're calculating now our carrying amount, we say 900,000 rands, which is the carrying amount at the date of the change in estimate, minus now the depreciation of the current period, which our depreciation, meaning impairment loss, is 120,000 rands. So now this will give us an amount of 780,000 rands. So now the 780,000 rands is what we call the carrying amount. Then we say carrying amount of 780 minus uh, the recoverable amount. And we can see that our recoverable amount now, it is higher than the carrying amount. Our recoverable amount is higher than the carrying amount. That is why we have the reversal of the impairment loss of 70,000 rands. Yeah, I hope I'm making myself very clear on that. So now that is where the 70,000 is coming from. And it's very important to show those workings that uh, we have said 850,000 rands, which is the recoverable amount, minus the carrying amount of 780,000 rands. That is where now the reversal of the impairment loss is coming from. So it is so easy to calculate that. And we have this approach for me, honestly, is the simplest one. If you just make sure that your net carrying amount is the same as your recoverable amount, then you know that your gross carrying amount always is the cost price of this intangible asset. You minus your accumulated amortization, and we know that accumulated amortization, it is the amortization of the previous year plus the amortization of the current year at the year of the change in estimate then the sum of the two will give you the accumulated amortization of 175,000 rands. Then it's very easy. Cost of the asset, 1,100,000 rands minus, minus 175,000 rands, which is a, a accumulated amortization. You get 925,000 rands. And you say this 925 is still... Uh, not enough minus 180,000 then you find the difference to be 75,000 that means the difference that you need which is negative is 75,000 rands and again where is this 75,000 rands coming from the 75,000 rands it is the impairment loss of the previous year 145,000 rands minus the reversal of the impairment of 70,000 and the difference will be uh, the accumulated impairment loss uh, of 75,000. So that is where this is coming from, 145,000 minus 75,000 rands. That is the remaining now, um, sorry, 145,000 rands minus 70,000 rands, not 75,000 rands. That will give us the 75,000 rands of the remaining accumulated impairment. So now this is very, very, very clear in terms of calculations. Very easy marks to grab when it comes to this type of question. Guys, uh, please make sure that you grab these marks as much as you can. Yeah. Yeah, this question now I've covered the eight marks. Uh, that is very, very important to note. Then now we go to the next part of this question. Uh, next part of this question, uh, anything that's not clear, everything is very, very clear now. 
Uh, the next part of this question is the preparation or to motivate why the Coca-Cola brand is classified as an intangible asset. Uh, we need to refer to the definition criteria of an intangible asset. And this is a very popular question uh, that normally comes out of the exam. And I'll just uh, simply tell you in, in, in explanation, I'm not going to be writing anything. The first bullet point when it comes to the definition of an intangible asset, you need to mention the fact that uh, the brand is identifiable or is a unique or distinguishable. And uh, secondly, the brand must be without any physical substance and the brand must be non-monetary, meaning it cannot be classified as cash or cash equivalent. So the first part is the fact that it must be identifiable or unique. It must be identifiable. Identifiable. Or it must be unique. Or meaning it must be distinguishable. Distinguishable from other brand. That means uh, this brand is identifiable or unique or distinguishable from other brands. You should be able to distinguish. We are able to say this is the Coca-Cola brand. It is distinguishably unique from other brands that the company has. So that is the first part of the definition. Number two of the definition is it states that the brand is non-monetary, meaning it, it, it cannot be classified as cash equivalent. It must be non-monetary. Non-monetary. That means it cannot be classified as cash or cash equivalent. So there is no cash equivalent that can be put on the brand. That is bullet point number two. Bullet point number three on defining uh, 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 an asset by referring to its definition criteria as intangible. It means that the brand does not have physical substance the brand does not have physical substance no physical substance no physical substance that means uh, uh, you cannot touch it is untouchable uh, the legal right to use uh, the, this brand is untouchable meaning is something that you cannot touch it is without a physical substance it is just the right to use the brand in order to manufacture the products that you want to manufacture otherwise it is without physical substance so this is the three bullet points uh, that are very very straightforward the last one is the preparation of the general interest for coca-cola brand for the financial year ended 31st of december 2011 now the general interest i've already covered them to be honest because the first one is the recognition of the cost of this brand now when i'm saying the recognition remember we bought this brand a uh, coca-cola brand so now it is it will be a coca-cola brand coca-cola brand and this will be cost. We bought this brand at a purchase price of one million and forty thousand, and it was bought for cash. Therefore, now we need to credit bank by one hundred and forty thousand. Then we had legal fees that we incurred, which are the cost to be capitalized. So now this is still again Coca Cola brand. coca-cola brand cost because the legal fees are the fees that need to be capitalized to the cost of this intangible asset again these legal fees were paid in for cash therefore now the 60,000 will be credited and this will be our bank decreasing by the payment of 60,000 rands for the legal fees that means cost plus the cost will give us that 1 million 100,000 rands then we needed to take into account the amortization if you remember by the end of the year 2011 there was amortization meaning the depreciation of this intangible asset of 55,000 rands then after we 
have to credit our accumulated amortization and impairment loss. Accumulated amortization. Accumulated amortization. And impairment loss. And there's a lot for which assets for the Coca-Cola brand. We need to mention that for Coca-Cola brand because there might be other brands. So we need to specify which of the accumulated amortization and impairment loss are we recording. Then after there was impairment loss by the end of 2011, There was impairment loss in 2011 and the impairment loss in 2011 was 145,000. Then after we say accumulated amortization and impairment loss. Accumulated amortization and impairment loss. Accumulated amortization and impairment loss. For what? For Coca-Cola brand. For Coca-Cola brand. And that accumulated amortization and impairment loss was 145,000. We were only required to do the general interest only for up to the end of the year 2011. Remember, this is up to end of December 2011. So we recorded the cost, which is divided into uh, the purchase price and the legal fees recorded the uh, amortization and recorded the impairment loss. So this is what was required. Remember, this is 2012. From year onwards, is 2012. We're only busy with 2011 upwards. So 2012 will be the amortization of the current year, the reversal of the impairment loss uh, for the current year. But this general interest were not required. We are only required to do the ones for the year 2011. So this will be the general interest that will be required of you. Yeah, guys, with all of that, uh, thank you very much. I will still be recording another question and another question on the theory part um, and also the definitions uh, um, of the intangible asset, how to define uh, according to the definition criteria of an intangible asset. With all that, guys, being said, uh, thank you very much. And I hope you grabbed something uh, to this question. Thank you.